I know. Okay. That's how I feel. I'm getting All a little right. hot too. So now what I have the students do is read, come over here and, uh, mm -hmm. and take a look. We'll read this stuff on concave mirrors. Mm -hmm. okay. Blah, blah, blah. The principal axis, concave mirror. Here's a, a diagram. Here's, this is called the principal axis. That's a focal point. That's where that bright spot mm -hmm. that we saw was. You have a light, you have a light ray that's coming in parallel to the, to the uh, principal axis and it reflects back through the focal point. And this is a, a lab activity that we'll do later. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, I don't think I've got that. Yeah, but at any rate, so it talks about real versus virtual images and real images formed by concave mirrors, and I have them read this stuff, okay? okay. I'm not going to do that, though. Okay. All right, so uh, what did we observe? <coughs> at arm's length, I noticed that I'm upside down. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of hard to keep my eyeball in the middle of the picture. As I come in, I'm getting larger and larger and larger. Okay, and that's kind of what we saw mm -hmm. as the we started off with a mirror close on the lab and had a big one, and as we went farther out, it got smaller, okay? But then as you get close, it gets really hard to keep your eyeball in the middle, and then there's a point where it's like scrambled eggs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like you can't see anything, and then all of a sudden, boom, you flip. there you are and you're right side up uh -huh. and as you get closer for where you are right side up at first that's where you're large mm -hmm. and then as you come in closer you get smaller mm -hmm. you ever had a makeup mirror you yes you used a makeup mirror yes that's what this is uh -huh. it's a concave mirror it much gentler concave mirror mm -hmm. and it allows you to magnify your image that you see. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like them. It shows your pores. Mm -hmm. okay. Wait. So, 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 in so inverted. Inverted and kind of small. Yeah, and I get it's bigger, bigger as, as I come closer. Come in, and then Hard as you to get keep to a it. certain point, it's it's you can't keep mm -hmm. your eye in the. Face. And now I get. And then all of a sudden, boom! You're right side up. And t I, am I getting bigger as I as I come closer now? Uh, at where it first, where you first jump out, where you can see yourself, you're yeah. Big. Oh, oh, and then I get and then smaller. As you come in, it gets smaller. Okay, yeah. Okay. Mhm. Mm <laughs> this is always a cool thing. Uh, I have the, the stand over here. Oh no, no, you're right. You're stand back there. And what you do is see if you can put this on the screen. And this, some of these mirrors are better than others. Yeah. And okay. it should be upside down. It should be upside down and backward. Yeah, and backward. Oh, yeah. It's, and that's important. It's upside down and backward. And reverse. And reverse. All right, reverse. Well, no, that's a term I use. All right, so <clears throat> mirrors form images. The image can be the same or different size than the object, and we saw that. Mm -hmm. Okay, mirrors can be flat, convex, or concave. Uh, the outside here's a spoon. The outside of it, yeah. The outside that's convex. Mm -hmm. That's like the up in the corner at Seven Eleven. Mm -hmm. You know, up in the corner where your right side. Yeah, yeah. And then you turn the spoon around, and there's the bowl, the inside bowl that's concave, mm -hmm. and you're upside down. Okay, here's the thing. Changing the distance between the object and the mirror changes the distance from the mirror to the image. Mm -hmm. And here, the, here we've got the object close. Mm -hmm. And the image, image is far. far, and as we move the object out, the image comes in. Yeah, we saw that. Okay. Okay, a spherical mirror is part of a sphere. Spherical concave mirror. For example, if I have this sphere and I cut a piece off of it, here would be the piece would be my mirror. Mm, yeah, okay. okay. And so it is a part of a sphere, and every sphere has a radius. Mm hmm. And so if I cut that off and look at the line from the center of the sphere to the center of the mirror, that's the principal axis. Okay. okay that's 
That's called the principal axis. And here's a here's an illustration of that. And yeah. here's the mirror. Here's the center of curvature. Mm -hmm. That would be the center of the of the sphere. Mm -hmm. And from that to the center of the mirror, that's the principal axis. That's the principal from axis. Here to there. Principal axis. So that circle is on the mirror. That's a very important thing. Okay. Okay. Light and here's the big deal. Here's the big idea. Light rays that come in parallel to the principal axis are reflected to the focal point. Mm -hmm. Now the sun radiates light out in all directions. Mm -hmm. But it's like 93 million miles away. So and they might so as well be parallel. By the time they get to us, they, they are parallel for all yeah. intents and purposes. So what we saw with that mirror out there is we had this parallel light in. rays coming in, reflecting to one point. Mm -hmm. That's the focal point. Got it. Okay, so this is real important. And the focal point lies halfway between the mirror and the center of the sphere. Mm -hmm. So here in this illustration, here's the mirror, there's the center of the sphere. The focal point is halfway mm -hmm. in between. Okay. And the distance from the mirror to the focal point is called the focal length. Okay. Right? So if you have a mirror whose radius of curvature is 12 centimeters, where will you find the focal point? At six, at six centimeters. That's all there is to it. Okay. And we already talked about this. As the object moves in, the image moves out. Okay? And so if you're describing the image, it's either upright or inverted. Mm -hmm. Upright or inverted. Okay. So upright is standing up. Inverted is on your head. Okay? The image is in front of the mirror, and it is real. Mm, okay. So it's in front of... You no, know, it says, if... The image is in front of the mirror. It's real. Okay, so uh, when we had our front. our setup over there, at every point we had the screen in front mm -hmm. of the mirror. Yeah. If the screen were behind the mirror, that wouldn't be real. Yeah, the plane mirror is the only one. It's been behind. Yeah. It's virtual. Well, actually, you can get a virtual image. Oh, you can. And we'll get to that in a minute. If the rays converge only behind the mirror then the image is virtual. Mm -hmm. Here's our object right here. Mm -hmm. Notice it's inside the focal point. Oh, okay, yeah. If it's inside the focal point, then you draw arrows, the image is behind, mm -hmm. and it's upright. This is when you bring this in, you're upside down, upside down. When you get to the focal point, there's no image, then all of a sudden, boom, you're inside, you're right side up. And that's because what you're seeing right side up when it's close the image is behind the mirror which one you're the object right yes you're the object. okay light yeah. is coming from you into the mirror yeah okay so that's a virtual image and uh today students will locate images formed by mirrors that looks like what do you call that thing you're supposed to have on the board that they the objective I mean, there's the objective yeah. oh my god <laughs> i only do an objective a couple times over the entire school year okay okay the image produced by a mirror can be located by making a ray model diagram and guess what we're going to do ray model diagrams we're going to make a ray model diagram. okay okay so here's how you make a ray model diagram Now, what I do, I shouldn't have raised that, but I don't care. What I do is I will set up a, I'll have my calculator right here, and they're going to be drawing this on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And so, the first thing you do, draw a line. Draw the axis. What is PA? Principal axis. Principal axis, there you go. Then, okay. Here. And, hold up.
It looks like this is a concave mirror. How am I going to draw a concave mirror? I don't know. We will represent the concave mirror with a straight line. Okay. Now here's the thing. I do not remember the focal length on this. I think... I don't have it written down. I think I'm going to... I'm going to say that the focal length is 8 centimeters. Yeah, focal length is eight, 8 centimeters. So when I do this on the board, 8 centimeters is that much. That's not going to work. Uh, and 14 centimeters, let's see. You know what? Let's do this on a piece of paper. Is that right? Okay. On a graph, oh, some graphing paper. Nah, blank paper. Blank. I got blank paper over there. Garbage everywhere. Boom. Garbage everywhere. Okay, boys and girls. Damn it. Did it break? Well, no, it's got these notches in it. All right, All right so here's our principal axis. And it'll work, we can do it. So what I'm doing is 90 degrees, that's our mirror. Okay. And we got 14 centimeters. Yeah, that's good. Um, I think if I remember correctly, and I probably don't. Wait, you said 14? Yeah, well that's the, but I need to know the, the focal point. Mm. So the focal point, let's say it's a eight centimeters, no, 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters, that means the center of curvature is at 12. So that's the center of curvature. You know what, it's eight. So this is the focal point and the center of curvature is 16. Okay, because it's half of it. Yeah. Okay, and what we want is we want to put our object at 14 centimeters. Mm -hmm. So there's our object and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another one of these. So focal point is 8, curvature 16, object at 14. Right. <clears throat> now here's, this is distance the object 14 centimeters. All right, so what I want to do is I want to make a perpendicular, and it's got to be perpendicular, and you'll see why in just a moment. So I'm going to make a perpendicular line here, and I'm going to measure two centimeters. Probably do it this way so you can see it. Two centimeters right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the height of the object is two centimeters. Okay, draw an arrow. Two centimeters is the object and the correct distance from the mirror. All right, I'm bringing this over here. Draw a ray from the, oh, and this should be an arrow. Draw a ray from the arrow to the mirror parallel to the principal axis. How am I going to make sure it's parallel? You've got to measure two inches up over there. That's exactly right. I want, I want two centimeters off of this. Okay, and now I want to draw, uh, and this will be one light ray that goes from the tip of the arrow, arrow it comes in parallel to the principal axis. Mm -hmm. Well, if it comes in parallel to the principal axis, it reflects back through the focal point. And I'm going to use this one. No, 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 I'm going to use this one. Okay, so there's the focal point. 
and you can see how this is garbage in, garbage out. Mm -hmm. You can also see how some students just love this stuff. Mm -hmm. They like drawing. Okay, so here's comes in, and I draw an arrowhead here, I draw an arrowhead there. All right, draw another ray from the point of the arrow through the focal point to the mirror. All right, here's a focal point, there's the tip. I'm gonna draw another line. To the mirror. Now I notice I kind of miss the focal point with this line, so mm -hmm. it's going to be a little bit, sh you know, it's not going to be completely accurate, mm -hmm. such as like. Okay, so now if light comes in parallel, it goes out through the focal point. Mm -hmm. What will happen if light comes in through the focal point? Do you think? Um, It'll go like out this. parallel by symmetry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll go out parallel. So how can I once again? How can I draw a parallel? Uh, I have to measure, measure how oh, far so this so is. That doesn't look like two inch, uh, two centimeter is a little bit it's off about there. About 2.5. So yeah. I'm going to make a line down here, 2.5 centimeters. Right there. And I can see already that I should have used the longer ruler. Mm -hmm. So then, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this line a little bit farther. Mm hmm. Oh, and that's where your your real image will be. Well, I, actually, you're right. A real image. The image is located where the two reflected rays intersect. That's the location of the image. Mm -hmm. Images are formed where 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 light rays converge, mm -hmm. or where they where they appear to converge. Now, draw an arrow with a bray base on the principal axis and the point on the intersection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this at 90 degrees until I reach where they cross. Okay, right about there. Oh yeah, and it's inverted. Okay, so here's, here's my object right here, and I should have distance to the object is 14 centimeters instead of down here. It gets in the way. You learn these things over time, okay? Now, measure the height of the image. So the height of the image is 2. Point, well, we got that over here, right? Mm -hmm. Height of the image That makes is sense because it's a little bit bigger. Centimeters. And the distance from the mirror, the, can I measure it with this? Nope. Mm -hmm. That's a much better ruler, the little guy. I'm gonna call that 17.3, so the distance to the image is 17.3 centimeters. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. There's your free, there is your ray, ray, di ray, di ray diagram. <sighs> Sweet. Right. If the distance is 16, and so here's what we would do. We would do Backward. another, uh, in fact, we're going to do three diagrams. Mm -hmm. 16 centimeters, 2 centimeters, 12 centimeters. So we've got 16, 14, and 12, and 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can check the accuracy of your diagram by making a third ray from the tip of the arrow through the center point. So through that thing right there. The tip of the arrow through the center point. Oh. So there's the tip of the arrow. There's the center point. It's not it's not bad. So it should be back here. Yeah. And like I said, I missed the point. So you can see a little bit of slop here. Yeah has a big impact on your result. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's how you make a ray model diagram for this. And what will happen uh, with the 16, when you go out, the image will come in. Well, you know what? I, I, certain, I suddenly realize what the focal length should be. I can't believe I don't have the focal length anywhere on this. Yeah. But it makes sense because the further we moved out, the closer the image comes in. And so what you'll do is you'll have a series of diagrams mm -hmm. where the relationship between the image and the object is, goes back and forth. As, yeah. the object, as the object goes out, the image comes in. As the image go, object goes out, the image goes out. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do that. Ray model diagrams can be checked for accuracy mathematically. Behold! Woohoo! The mirror equation.
One over the focal point. I vaguely remember this now. <sighs> All right. So, we've got the distance the object was 14 centimeters. And, oh, wait a minute, I don't, let's, let's see, we want to solve for the distance the image. So what we have to do is subtract right. yeah. this. Uh huh. Okay, so that's an equal sign. That subtracts. That's one over what do we say? One over eight. Eight centimeters. So we've got our cheap minus button. that. So eight x to the negative one. Whoops. Minus fourteen x x to the negative one equals. That's not my answer. It's 18.6. Oh, not bad. What did we say? We said 17.3. And we and we had checked it and we said it needed to be a little bit further back. That is not bad. Yeah. Yeah, we got 17.3, but you can see, I'll bet if you Everything do this off. right there, I'll bet that's 18.6. Let's yep. just take a quick look. So that's right there. Nope. <laughs> Oh well. That's okay. It should, but it should be. Yeah. So here's two ways of analyzing the images formed by spherical contour. So draw your parallel in. So first, you need to label your center axis. Your, draw your your principal axis principal in axis your in your mirror, and then from there you draw your object with the height, you need your focal point, focal point, and your center. And your center. Uh mm -hmm. And then your object. Wherever it is. Yeah, distance the object, height of the object. Mm-hmm. Boom, okay. draw it through and then through the focal point. In parallel. Mm-hmm. Through the focal point. And then from there, from the tip of the object okay. through the focal point, and then parallel back out yeah and you know when I was taking the C set I was like I know I have to do something with the focal point but I couldn't remember which was which and inverted higher the object negative well good it's inverted and the distance will be longer yeah okay okay <clears throat> Magnification compares the size of the image with the size of the object. So if you magnify something, so, it's bigger. Yeah, so 2.5 divided by 2, it's So you if know, you have the bigger. height of the object, if the height of the image is larger, the magnification is greater than 1. Uh -huh. If the height of the image is less than the height of the object, the magnification is less than 1. Yeah, that makes sense. So uh, we could make some measurements, put them in here, we can come up with some magnification. But, check this out. The magnification depends on the oh. relation between the distance the object, the distance the image. As the object is um, in close, the image is bigger. Yeah. We saw that with the L. Mm -hmm. And as, as you move, wait a minute. Yeah, in close, and as we moved it back, the image came in and got mm -hmm. smaller. Yeah. And you can see why that is, because it's rotating around that focal point. Yeah, yeah. So in closer, larger image. And where they cross, farther, a little closer. Image. Yeah. So there's a relationship between all three of these, and this is actually the important equation right here. Put them together. Yeah. Oh, I remember you you showing me this before, actually. And I noticed that there's a negative here. What does that mean? Um. Well, for the image will be. Uh, it won't always be inverted. Right or invert. It will not always be inverted. Yeah. And you can see this from this. Uh, um, but the distance is negative. Yeah. That. The distance to the image, we want to find the height of the image. So we 
multiply times the height of the object, right? Yeah. And, uh, well, let's use our data here. And I should have used the thing from what we got a minute ago. Okay, before we had... Uh, yeah, 18.6. We had distance the object was 8 centimeters. Distance of the image was 14 centimeters. No, that's not right. No, this is the focal length. Oh, yeah. This is the distance the object. The distance the image is the 18.6. Yeah. We'll call it 18.7. All right. Let, so if the height of the image is two, two centimeters. centimeters and it's upright, it's positive, what should the height of the object be? I beg your pardon. What should the height of the image be? So this is going to oh. be negative distance to the image, which is 18.7 centimeters, mm -hmm. times the height of the object, which is two, two centimeters, divided by the distance of the object, which is 14, 14 centimeters. Mm -hmm. And our answer is going to be negative, which means that it's inverted. Oh, okay, I see. So uh, negative 18.7 times 2 divided by 14, and I get negative 2.6. Negative 2.7. Not bad. Negative 2.7 centimeters. Did we actually measure that? Yeah, we had 2.5. We had 2.5, 2 so we're close. All right, so this is uh, a remarkably powerful tool. And lenses are important, especially for people with bad eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Doom.